So we're going to get one of these uh, heart sensor things to work there. This is the KY039, cheapest heart sensor I could find on Amazon. Um, it's it's not a perfect uh, fit into the micro bit, uh, to be honest, but it, I will write a program here where it'll, it'll get your pulse. Uh, you can see it there on the screen there, um, but it's a little bit finicky compared to some of the better sensors. So uh, yeah, let me just show you the, the code here and give you a walkthrough of, of how you could do this. So just to let you know the background of how this works, right? An oximometer, um, or a, a heartbeat sensor in this case, what it's doing is it's shining a, uh, an LED through um, your veins or your, the blood in your finger and it's picking it up down here. Um, and kind of what happens is different uh, colors of red absorb different amounts of the light. So um, as your bread is bright and uh, nice and oxygenated, it absorbs a little bit of light. And as it, uh, as it gets darker and um, kind of between your pulses, um, the amount of light it absorbs is a bit less. So that's why there's this kind of tiny variation. Now, as you can imagine, that's a pretty small variation, okay? So if I even move my finger a tiny bit or in any way shaky, the, it'll be just it'll be complete junk, okay? So you're looking for the difference between 100 million and one less than 100 million, right? It's tricky. This is a, it's not an easy one. So uh, the way I've got this working at the moment, um, I have got a part of this code that works at your BPM. So the way I'm doing that uh, is I'm kind of figuring out from trial and error roughly the height of a peak, okay, from my serial data, whatever that is, a number, okay. Um, and you can see it'll peak. So basically, when it goes above a certain level, I'm going to say that's a heartbeat, yeah. And then uh, I'll put a little peak counter to count how many. And then aside from that, I'll start a timer. And then you divide by you know how many beats per second, multiply by sixty, and that's beat per minute. There's my timer as well. Um, one of the big problems I had with this uh, code is if you just go straight off the bat and measure. Um, Let's say I've got the heart rate number. I'll just show you this because I think this will really help you understand this part of the code. Okay. If I was just to um, like set heart rate um, number, which is the variable here, if I was just to go into variables and set that as it is to the serial read, okay, analog pin, that's the one there that's coming in and download it, you'll find that data will look very, I don't know how to describe it, noisy. It's just kind of all over the place, all right? Um, so let me just show you what that looks like. If you click on show console, um, now, regardless of what you do here, you'll notice that you see like the slightest bit when I move this around, the, the data is going crazy. So I need to put my finger in between this, the um, receiver and the emitter between those two things and just hold it still for a while. And then you'll see, look at it, like the tiniest variation. So just give it a while to kind of zoom in there for a second, okay? And on this serial, if you just wait a little bit, once it flattens out, it will zoom in to find a tiny difference, okay? And again, it'll zoom in again. Now you see the way it is just like, uppy downy, uppy downy, uppy downy, uppy downy, uppy downy. It's, it's just too jittery, you know? Um, it's kind of all over the place. So there are some sort of smoothing algorithms you could use. The most basic one is the one I've done here, which, you know, you you may have just done yourself having a guess. Didn't even know it was called a smoothing algorithm or whatever. Um, so what I've done here is instead of just setting it to whatever the read is, okay, I'm taking three reads variables a b and c now if i was doing this in in a text-based coding I'd, you know it actually probably be easier because i just have a list right but in block coding it's a little bit trickier to get like the average of a list uh, and statistics so um 
I did try, but I couldn't find any like way uh, in block coding of um, like importing the statistics module and just getting the a block for the mean of the list or the average. Uh, it, it, like yeah, so I'm going to do it very manually with lay with the variables. I'm going to go A, B, and C, and then uh, after I read it three times with a 20 millisecond pause in between, I then add them up and divide by three. Okay, so instead of going up, down, up, I'm kind of getting the average. So I'm taking three values at a time, getting the the average of them, and then having that as the point. So every point in my graph is actually the average of three very quick measurements. And what that does is it smoothens out any completely erratic points. Um, so you could add more. Uh, a, B, C, D, and E, if you wanted to have it smoother. You could also play around with the intervals in between them. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's very kind of like um, a bit finicky. And uh, if you thought that was finicky, get ready for the next part. Um, how do you count where the peak is? Well, the problem is, and I've got it here, such that I'm just gonna zoom in just so you can see. I've got it here that when uh, the serial read in, the signal it's getting to this um, receiver here, when it's bigger than 982, I've worked that out that that's pretty much a peak. But like the four times, five times I got back to this, uh, you know, maybe my finger is just in the, a slightly wrong position or whatever, and it really does, uh, like that number uh, can change. So maybe it's just that there's more kind of background light uh, coming in from the sunshine or whatever, because that's there's a bit of infrared there. Um, so that might be somewhere where you could modify this code is to, to kind of do that itself, take a, a, a few highs and lows and work out roughly where the 80th percentile is to take it, to call it a peak a peak. So if I look into here now, okay, I'm gonna look at this number here on the left. Look, it says 968, 967, 968, 969. Okay, so I'm gonna just let it smooth it out just a little bit longer before I kind of, say where roughly okay so i'm going to say anything like anything above like 967 is probably a heartbeat you see around there 967 968 okay so definitely 968 you see what's happening here where the whole thing has gone down a little bit that is because i'm holding this up in front of the camera so what i really need to do is just put this down put my finger down there and don't freaking move it okay so right right there is is pretty good I'm getting a little bit of a variation. It's going up and down. I can probably call it that at about nine, see it's going from 988, 987, 989. So pretty much 988 would be a peak. So what I can do is go into the program and change it to add a peak count every time it gets to 988, okay? So, oh, I can't do that because the second I go for the mouse, <laughs> this is all gonna get messed up. But anyway, it's fine. I'll just go back. Um, so I would have changed that number here to 988. It was currently a 982. So if it goes above that, that is a peak. So I change it by one. It's important you um, uh, add this serial right line here at the end because otherwise I found what it does is just keeps adding the thing onto the same line and you get this huge, big, long number. Um, whereas actually you want a new number every time. Cool. So um, what I've done to get the, the BPM is the beats per minute is I've done this five times now just because I'm kind of impatient. Um, but you could change this to 10 and, and, and 10 here for 10 seconds or 30 seconds if you want it more accurately. But I'm, I'm just doing a counter for five seconds. Okay, so have a timer, go up by one every 1,000 milliseconds, which is every one second. So this whole block is counting to five. If you've ever counted five before, you'll you'll get that, okay? Um, then set the value of BPM, a variable I've made up to, however many peaks I counted as we're going by, right? Um, and I'm gonna divide it by five because it's over five seconds uh, and time 60 for because it's 60 seconds a minute, so that will give me the BPM. Um, and then I want to reset the timer and reset the peak count because I want this whole process to start again. And um, finally, I can write the BPM is rounded off roughly. Um, 
unpause it for you know a thousand milliseconds so that is it now i i also put in some code which is kind of funny if you put a forever loop you can play a middle c as in like a little beep um and then pause for whatever the bpm is divided by 60. Um, and that will it will go beep 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 faster when your heartbeat goes faster which is pretty cool um unfortunately i have to turn off here i don't have the forever loop because this simulator doesn't actually take in any real data and when i uh ran this in the simulator it set the gap between the the noisy tones to zero so it was just going like going really really fast and ear piercing as i was trying to move blocks of code around so i just had to turn it off okay if you hook up to an actual speaker it will behave normally and just beep with your heartbeat but the simulator just assumes that it's getting no data so it freaks out and you get this crazy techno beat um so that is it there are the parts that go this is just the setup this is the little bit of smoothening um then you write it into your serial counting the peaks and um this is the the code to count, this is counting five and this is um getting the bpm so that is how it all works i say works star it does give you pretty like reasonable beat beat per minute like um it's giving you about 65 72 around then so yeah but i i found sometimes i have to change positions five different times and it just keeps saying 23 values of the same thing so like my fingers just not right in the right place so you have to just keep moving around your thumb until it, it it's it's right that the the vein in your thumb is right in between the emitter and the the transceiver um, which is just finicky you know anyway i'm sure if you had a fix to a position like i just have it loose here but if you had a fix it would be a little bit more um reliable but anyway um so that isn't working and i'll put the code here in the into the description if you want to download it and modify it maybe you could add in instead of a b and c uh a D and an E and an F for more th smoothening. Um, things you could play around with there. Cool beans, best of luck. Um, I will be covering uh, <laughs> other heart sensors <laughs> because that one was rubbish. <laughs> it was cheap in fairness. And I'm amazed that I got it to read out any data at all.